Following is an arrival address given by His Holiness Jaya Pataka Swami Maharaj on November 24th, 1982 in Chennai, India. to uh, Mayapur Dam for in Calcutta for the Janmashtami festival. After that, then I went on a world tour which led me to London, Stockholm, France to the European big festival there then in Washington D.C. there was a big Rath Yatra that I was invited to that came out in back to Godhead and then from there I was in Los Angeles for their Rath Yatra festival there you might have noticed in one of the Iskan World Review I was painting an elephant that was you don't get this kind of one here. It's a really old issue. When uh, I went there, they had the elephant all decorated, but they had no tilak on the elephant. So I said, in South India, all the elephants are wearing big tilak. Then only they're going in the procession. So why don't you put on the paint on the tilak? So no one was eager to put on the paint on the head. So they gave me the brush and said, you do it. So since they were reluctant, so I was putting on the tea light. The Mahut was holding and I was putting on. So that someone just took a snap and they published that in the Istan World Review. There were about 200,000 people at our Los Angeles Rafi Yatra. Bhavananda Goswami, Sina Rameshwar Swami, Prison. And from there I went to Washington, to uh, New Vrindavan, they had a festival. Then I'm initiating in Atlanta, Georgia, in Nashville, Tennessee, in Murray Sabak Farm, in Tennessee, in Mississippi, and in New Orleans. So I toured my initiating zone there. And we had some college programs. So I have some college clubs where the students meet every week and discuss Krishna consciousness. And we made the preparations for the New Orleans Rathi Yatra. Then I went down to South America, Colombia, Bogota, Colombia, Lima, Peru. In Lima, Peru, that in the most recent <coughs> can go, just put it on one or two. two. This is one. So, when I reached Lima, when the police had uh, surrounded me, I didn't know what was happening, whether this was some kind of a surprise situation. The police took me away, said, you're Jai Pataka Swami? I said, yes. They took me away, took me in a room. There they were pressed. It was the VIP lounge. They didn't want me to wait in the line. So they took me in their room. It was the VIP lounge. There was two television stations there, radio, all the newspaper men. So for about an hour, hour and a half, they had interview to give the message to the whole nation how the people 
can achieve happiness and peace in this troubled world. And then from that day on in uh, Peru, every day was a very big festival in the National Library Auditorium. We had a big program and uh, in art, in one art uh, society in their auditorium. Many, every day there were big programs. There was a wedding ceremony done in the Vedic style that was televised over the whole nation. At that time also there was a initiation ceremony that was also put on the television. There, television is quite uh, widespread in all the towns and villages. And uh, from there I went to Arequipa, which was the, is the second city of Peru. And Arequipa, the governor of the uh, province met me and uh, received me and offered uh, all uh, welcoming and uh, good uh, fortune for whatever, for the uh, successful mission that the people may be benefited by the spiritual association. And they gave a special limousine which had two flags, the Indian flag and the Peruvian flag. And this black limousine was escorted by two police mitre motorcycle escort with sirens blaring and the light flashing and they stopped all the traffic, stopped the whole main road so that the uh, procession of cars following behind the limousine could uh, go on. In this way, I was feeling just uh, that uh, because Prabhupada was present during all these preaching tours, therefore, the and because Krishna was present, therefore, all these uh, facilities are being provided. So there we had also a very big festival in the park, about 6,000 people came. And then even people for the, there for the first time, for the big fire sacrifice and the big kirtan and drama, at the end when we were giving out prasad, they came up and for the first time they were bowing down before Krishna with uh, reverence, feeling overwhelmed by the uh, spiritual atmosphere which had been created. From there I went to Chile, where also I am initiating there. There in Santiago I was on the uh, Le Grand Tarde, or the great, the great afternoon show on the Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening, which is the main time everyone likes to watch the television. And uh, that uh, television show showed about 12 minutes uh, interview with, with myself and then we had a kirtan group with the GBC Jagajivan Swami and uh, many other programs. One of the persons who was on the TV show, Dharmananda Das, has now come with Bhagi, Bhagavadami the Prabhu in uh, Bangalore. So also there are many, we did some program there in a, in a big college with over 1500 students. And after the program, when I requested the students not to engage in drugs or engage in any type of immoral activity, but to rather develop their spiritual consciousness, the director of the school, he presented us with a, a banner of the school and with a special silk uh, school certificate. Uh, and we presented a couple of books for his library. And he gave a speech how they appreciated so much that the Krishna conscious movement was bringing the real Indian culture and the real spiritual understanding to the uh, distant parts of the world. Like that we had uh, programs every day. Also in the big amphitheater in the uh, O'Higgins Park in central Santiago where again about four or five thousand people gathered in the big amphitheater. And... Uh, Turnover crowd was much more, maybe 10,000, but at one time, four or five. And then all the people began to circumambulate the fire sacrifice and the deity. So from there I came back to North America. Actually, it cost as much and it takes as much time to fly from India to North America and back again over the Pacific. It takes just that much time to fly from North America to Chile and back. It's a... Uh, if you leave in the morning at 6 o'clock, you will reach in the evening at 8 o'clock. It's a 14-hour flight. And the cost is even 
more in some cases. So it's a, quite a long distance. The farthest end of the world from India. Yet, uh, according to the Ramayana, Ramachandra went to South America in the search of and, and defeated Kumbhakarna there. So, somehow it's a blessed place. People are very pious there. And with the introduction of uh, Vedic culture, there's every hope that uh, that place can be uh, delivered again to a spiritual consciousness in the purest form. So coming back to North America, I was at the Rathiatra New Orleans. That was very nice up there. Uh, Panchadavida Swami Maharaj was present and uh, many other Brahmananda Swami. From there, I came to Hawaii. In Hawaii, we did some uh, programs on the Jaladut 2 boat. And from Hawaii, I came to Japan, where we were doing uh, Sankirtan in the Times Square, Shunjuku, of Tokyo, as well as in the park. And we're having some programs in our temple there. Many people were coming. They're making some ba Japanese bhaktas there. Bhaktas, bhaktins. Then from there, I came to Hong Kong. In Hong, Kong, in Hong Kong, we did just one day preaching and uh, some devotees from there came for our Vrindavan festival. They just were at Mayapur and returned back to Japan, to uh, China. <coughs> from Hong Kong, we were doing preaching all around the area. can't go into too much detail, but uh, they're doing preaching deep into the... Uh, preaching uh, field which lies all around Hong Kong. Then, from there I came back to Bangkok. I bought some pictures of Bangkok. There we just had a new center, which uh, we were, hadn't moved in when I got there, but now they've moved into it. But even in our old center, which is a little bit on the one side of town, and the new center is right next to the GPO, even in the old center we have many Chinese and Thai, Buddhist, and other uh, Indian uh, origin people all combined, they're all chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, and uh, feasting on Krishna Prashanam, all chanting on the bliss. And then from there I came back, and immediately when I arrived in Calcutta, they had a panel program waiting for me in uh, one of the parks in Calcutta, so I could only spend a day or two in Mayapur. I immediately came back for the preaching program in Calcutta. And then, of course, Went to Vrindavan and uh, spent some more time in different parts of my zone. And now I'm coming here. So, in this way, in touring around the world, we could see this time that actually the enthusiasm of the devotees has uh, picked up. And the unity is growing more and more. Just like we had this beautiful uh, ceremony in Vrindavan, where from all over the world, different uh, acharyas and GBCs and sannyasis and devotees, they all came together. This is not a, a formal function. It's not a, that uh, this uh, Vrindavan ceremony is something that everyone is required to come. It's just something spontaneously people are coming. And uh, so many devotees came and made a very intimate, wonderful worship of Srila Prabhupada. And now we're preparing already for our annual festival in Mayapur this March, March 20th, that I was discussing with Srila Bhavananda Goswami in Mayapur for several days. So, one thing I'm noticing is that devotees sometimes, they become uh, careless in dealing with the material nature and in maintaining the very basic principles of Krishna consciousness. Of course, the main principles are chanting 16 rounds and avoiding the four regular principles. What happens is sometimes the devotee engages in so much devotional service that it seems difficult to chant the 16 rounds. Of course, a devotee in the temple engaging in a lot of devotional service somehow or another is still being protected. Still, 
it's very dangerous not to chant 16 rounds every day. And for someone who's not living in the temple, who is engaging in many unrelated activities, activities simply for maintaining their body and soul together, if they neglect to chant, then of course it is much more dangerous. So one has to be very careful to chant. Otherwise, once we get out of chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Hare Hare, and Chi Chaitanya's Panchatattva Mantra, then what happens is gradually we lose the taste. We forget the sweet taste of Krishna consciousness. And then our mind starts to become filled with anxieties and dissatisfaction. And this way, we start to identify with our body in bodily consciousness and we become misled by the current of maya. To help us to think about Krishna, we dedicate this body as a temple to Krishna. That's why we wear tilak on the body, urda pundra, dwadas urdva pundra. This is mentioned in Padma Purana, other Puranas as well, that there are twelve tilaks put on the body. Now the tilak or urdva pundra is actually placed, each one, with the name of Vishnu, dedicating the body to the service of Vishnu. So, this is not only necessary for the uh, sannyasis and brahmacharis to wear, but it's also essential even for the grihastas to wear. In fact, since grihastas are living closer to the material world, in fact, they should be more careful to take all the different advantages. Now sometimes when one's working outside in the material world, it may not be suitable, although it's a very unfortunate thing that in India today, uh, people have become such that one cannot wear tilak without being ashamed. I have a disciple in, uh, in Thailand who is a Mishinga Tirtha Das, maybe some of you know him, and he wears his tilak everywhere, even in Japan, in Thailand, everywhere he just wears his tilak. And normally anyone does business in Thailand, it's a different type of thing. So there's so many Japanese and other Asian, uh, Chinese and different businessmen there. But even the Japanese or Thai or, Thai or Chinese businessmen, they see him, they all automatically say, Hare Krishna. They know this is Hare Krishna. So he's not ashamed of it. But whether sometimes it may be un- not possible to wear the tilak visibly, then at least the tilak Mantra is not that we're just wearing like Adivasi or some tribal, we're putting on some paint on our body. If you're just putting on the paint and you're not saying the mantras, then what is the use? I sometimes go and I ask, what is the mantra of Tilak? Just to check if people know it. So we put on the Tilak, Um Si Keshavaya Namaha, Um Si Naranaya Namaha, Um Si Madhavaya Namaha, Um Si Govindaya Namaha. Each of the places has the different mantra. Um Sri Vishnavaya Namaha, Um Sri Madhusudanaya Namaha, Um Sri Chivikramaya Namaha, Um Sri Vamanaya Namaha, Um Sri Sridharaya Namaha, Um Sri Rishi Keshaya Namaha, Um Sri Padmanavaya Namaha, Um Sri Damodaraya Namaha, Um Sri Vasudevaya Namaha. In this way we put on the tilak and all the parts of our body, dedicating the body to this body, my mind, and my, myself, I, everything is for your service, Lord. Sri Krishna. In this way also we are protected from influence of karmas. That no longer do I want to enjoy my punya. No longer do I want to suffer my pop. I want to simply engage in your service. Whatever you give me, blessing, whatever you give me, punishment, Hari, Krishna. That's simply what I want. Manaso deho geho jo kichu monar filo tuva pade nanda kishor Bhakti Vino Thakur saying that oh my lord nanda kishor I am offering to your lotus feet Manaso my mind 
Manasu deho, my body, geho, my house, joki tumor, whatever I think ordinarily one considers to be his own, everything I am offering to you. Because it is all your property, everything is yours, your energy. Arpila tuva, even though we naturally think, well, this is my mind, my body, my family, my house, my. We consider like that. But even then, Bhakti Vinod is saying, no, these I am also offering unto you. Manaso deho geho joke chuma arpe lo tuva pode nanda kishore. Jivone morane. Bipode sampode. Whether living or dying. Whether in good fortune or whether in bad fortune. In danger. Whatever it may be. I'm simply offering every second unto you. So in this way, what actually becomes the greatest yogi? It's not that Ambarish Maharaja was less a yogi. It was because he was the greatest yogi that when Durvasa came and cursed him, and sent a demon after him that the Sudarshan killed that demon and chased Durvasa. Umbarish was the greatest yogi because he was the pure devotee. He was a grihasta. He was a king. Durvasa thought this is a materialist. But because he was wearing the tilak, because he was doing the puja, because he was offering his body, his mind, he was doing everything, even managing his whole worldly affairs, everything he was doing with the consciousness to please Guru and Krishna. Therefore, every action was chinmaya. It was above this material world. Mancha jo vavichari na bhakti jo gaina sevate sagunan samatitaitang brahma bhuvaya kalpatek was gunatit, above the gunas. Sattva guna, to help others' bodies. Material welfare. Raja guna, for one's own passion and interest. Or tama guna, out of ignorance, anger, hatred, envy, or illusion. It was no, none of these three motives dictated the life of Ambarish Maharaja. His motive was simply to please, Haridoshanam the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, he was the greatest yogi. Just as Krishna said, Sarvesham, uh, yogi nam api sarvesham madgate nantaratmana Most intimately connected to me. The example of the great devotees, Mahajana Jata, Janagata, Sapuntha, follow in their footsteps, follow their examples, and then, just as Prabhupada has shown, that can actually change not only ourselves, but can change the lives of the people around the whole world. Just as Prabhupada has shown. So I'm very glad that everyone here is gathering together, taking opportunity at a facilities of this temple. On the request of Prabhupada, we are maintaining a center here in Madras. He personally came here. He was the guest of the governor. He was preaching here in the big candles. But uh, for a long time, there was no center in the proper way. So, Paradeya Das and Uttama Sloka Das and others, they have all worked here hard. Now all of you have come so that we can have our Krishna Conscious Center here in Madras. Of course, this is only the humble beginning. There was yet more humble than this, but our vision is much greater that we hope to have a very big cultural center and temple and ashram and many schools and many uh, programs so that the people throughout the Tamil Nadu can feel the benefit that Krishna Consciousness has come to the state that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come to the city and that Srila Prabhupada has come to their life. See, we want that people can appreciate what is the real happiness. Even though they may have Vedic culture, even though in India Vedic culture is here, 
even though people know what is Bhagavad Gita, they know what is worshipping Krishna in certain aspects. But generally speaking, in India today, people are more affected by this Mayavadi philosophy or impersonal understanding that everything is one. They are not understanding the real happiness of the pure Krishna consciousness, of Krishna Prema, of understanding the Lord, the Supreme Absolute Truth in transcendental rupam or form. Ananta rupam. So, just as an example, the four Kumaras, they were Brahmavadi. They had realized the Brahma Jyoti, the Brahman. But when they went to the Vaikuntha Lokas, when they went out of this material world into the Brahma Jyoti, beyond the Brahma Jyoti to the spiritual planet, and when they could see Narayan and bow down before his lotus feet, at that time their whole bodies became quivering and they were feeling ecstatic symptoms, even though they were already in the Brahman realization. So what to speak of ordinary people in the material world who even though they may know something about the Vedas, who are still getting happiness only from this body. You see. They are far, far distant from the happiness that the four Kumaras had realizing the moksha, the Brahman. But even that Brahman was nothing, was simply like a uh, drop compared to the ocean of happiness that uh, they experienced when they actually had the direct darshana of Narayana. And that Narayana himself, when he sees the picture of Krishna in Vrindavana, he himself becomes attracted. Even Lakshmi is doing tapasya to go to Krishna Loka. That Krishna Loka is the topmost Vaikuntha Loka. That topmost Vaikuntha Loka, even Lord Shiva did, did tapasya so he could become the gatekeeper at the Ras Leela. Therefore he is known as Gopeshwara. That highest spiritual abode, which is Anandamaya Bhyasad, pure transcendental ecstasy, has been brought down to this world by the great Acharyas and given to everyone by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That great transcendental happiness is brought down in this Maha Mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Even if you chant the name of Krishna for ten million year, uh, ten million days of Brahma, you may not get love for Krishna. Moksha you may get, but you may not get love for Krishna. Krishna Prema is so rare. Yes, even ten million akkor, akkor kalpo or days of Brahma, you may chant Hare Krishna and not get love for Krishna if you commit offenses against the Holy Name. Ajamil chanted one name without offense, he achieved Parampadam. But if you chant with offense for billions of years, you still may not get love for Krishna. So what is the hope? We are in the Kali Yuga, we are so offensive, there is no hope then. Then what is the use of giving us the holy name? We may develop this type of doubt. You see? That is the special feature of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Papi tapi jato chilo hari nam udhalilo. That Chi Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, by chanting his name, by following in his footsteps, he immediately forgives one of all the offenses. He doesn't consider any offense. Therefore, even sometimes you see that offensive people, they're chanting Nittai Gaur, or they're chanting Sikhishta Chaitanya, they're also is experiencing some loving symptom. And if a person is sincerely trying, chanting Lord Chaitanya's name, 
and then chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, then actually they can achieve pure love for Krishna very quickly. That which even Brahma, Shiv, Narad, Sukhdev, they are always anxious to get that Krishna Prema. So this is the special mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that he is giving out this special nectar of pure love for Krishna. That we see all over the world, doesn't matter whether it's in China, whether it's in Japan, whether it's in Thailand or South America or North America or Europe, Asia, Africa, everywhere, no matter who the person may be, if he just chants, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Following the instructions of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, takes Krishna Prasad, associates with the devotees, renders some service, they experience transcendental happiness. They experience transcendental knowledge very quickly. The slok is there in the Bhagavatam also. That the holy name is so powerful it acts like fire. You don't have to know that whether fire burns or doesn't burn. You don't have to have faith or no faith. It doesn't have any relevance. If you put your hand in fire, you'll get burnt. If you chant the name of Krishna, knowingly or unknowingly, that holy name will act. Even if you commit offense and you chant, it will also act, but it will be delayed. Even the people are chanting with offense, still it will act, but it will be delayed. That is the wonderful thing that by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy, it is acting immediately because he is not considering offense. And you can see right before your eyes, people become filled with spiritual happiness. No matter what their karmas were, because karmas are immediately wiped out by chanting. Anyway, these are very esoteric things. So, that way we see that all over the world people are taking up the chanting. And simply one should try to chant and not use the chanting to give one material facility for more uh, materialistic activity, not use the chanting to perform sinful activity, not use the chanting for some temporary thing, but just use the chant to chant to please Krishna, chant to develop oneself spiritually and automatically everything else fits into place. Chant to live in a harmonious way with Krishna. Krishna provides everything. Whatever desire you have, whether it's material desire, whether it's desire for liberation or whether it's a desire for pure Krishna prema, love for Krishna. In any case, Simply by pure devotional service, as Lord Shiva has uh, described. Hmm. Or as there's, Bhagavatam is describing that. Akamo sarva kamo va moksha kamo udharaditya bhaina bhakti jogaina jajeta purushan param. Simply by performing this pure devotional service without any motive. Use any condition, maybe internal motive, but no condition. Whatever come what may, goes on serving. Then whatever the internal desire is, whether it's material desire, or whether it's a moksha desire, or whether it's akamo, no desire, simply desire to love Krishna, that desire is fulfilled. Automatically. But one shouldn't want to chant to continue sinful activity. Even if you have desire, material desire, that material desire should be for material happiness, for material, at least in the mode of goodness and passion, not in the mode of ignorance. So that way, the holy name purifies the whole world. Some leader was asking how to make everything correct, how we can manage, but the world is in such a topsy-turvy situation, it's almost, even if the Government wants to do something, they're hopeless. The people have become so materialistic. What can they do? The people themselves have to become spiritually awakened 
then only the world can change. So therefore, Lord Chaitanya's mass movement are bringing thousands and thousands of people together, chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, is the only hope in this troubled world. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. So tell me how everybody is. Some new faces here. Uh, I met Rasaraj. Mm-hmm. Well, what, what's the relation? Right. Yeah. Very nice wearing the tea light. Yeah. Don't want to embarrass anyone. <laughs> In the temple. Very nice that uh, Preacher Dean and Bell's family came today also. How's your family? Give them my bottom. <coughs> How are you? Here's a good, the whole family is uh, devotee. Is there anybody left or is that the whole family? No, that's all right. Yes? Sri Ram. Sri Ram. Oh, wonderful. Actually, because here, People have already the good culture, it's so much easier. When you're trying to preach in the West, you have to tell them, they say, why should I chant? Mm-hmm. Then you have to tell them, well, what, your karma, or you have to tell this or that, or somehow by hook or by crook, you just get to, but here the people naturally from their birth, they're chanting. It's a great opportunity. With just a little bit of uh, effort, they are very easy to achieve. Perfection. If one is just a little humble, then one can get that mood of pure bhakti. Pure bhakti. So that's very great opportunity. We know that uh, our Param Guru Dev, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasri Thakur, he likes South India so much. He said, if I have to again take birth in the world, I hope that I can take birth in the South India. So we don't know, even one great soul may come forward, it might even be, he might have come back in South India. You can't say, since he said that. So this is a great uh, stronghold of Vedic culture. But uh, due to so much difficulty, Brahmanas, non-Brahmanas, this, that, so much uh, uh, friction has been caused in society. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pure vision of Dvaiva Varnasram, that ultimately the soul is beyond all the designation, he is described in Achinta Veda Veda Tattva Darshan, that of course all the souls are part of Krishna, Mamai Vangsa Jiva Loki, Jiva Bhuta Sanatana. So the soul is originally pure, but it gets covered. Just like sunlight is pure, but if we see it through the different colored glass, we'll see red, yellow, blue. Like that, the consciousness is pure, but through different bodies and mentalities it comes out different. So this chanting and serving, that can allow the pure consciousness to manifest. And that's when people feel their natural happiness and bliss. And then when one takes that and doesn't only chant for one's own benefit but tries to help others, then one becomes very dear to Krishna. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita that of all the souls, those 
to explain this message of Gita to my devotees. They are the dearest to me. That's why this Krishna conscious movement, we could be just staying in holy place and just chanting, but we're coming here to the Madras and to New York City and London and all over the world. Even in Madras, so many buses and cars and exhaust you, you see. Nice, nicer is out in some ashram in the country. No one can argue. If we say in the weekend, let's go, no one is thinking, let's go downtown to Mount Road. They're thinking, let's go to Mahabalipuram, let's go to some place in the country, isn't it, on the beach. But why we're here, not because we have any material uh, fascination about the city. We're here just because we want to give the people who are here. People are in the city, so we are here to give those people Krishna consciousness. For helping others. In this way, we want, we want to take that little extra risk. We might be safer in a country ashram than living in the city where there's so much maya, tamas, rajas. You see, country is sattvic. Why we're here, we want to get the special favor of Krishna. Because he says that if someone distributes this message to my devotees, then I give them my special blessing. They are the dear most devotee to me. Just like in the country, there are so many citizens, but in time of war, naturally the government is glorifying the soldiers. Jawan. They're giving all the medals. So in this material world there's a war against Maya. So Krishna gives special reward to the soldiers who are fighting against the Mayas and bringing back the souls to their original spiritual consciousness. So we're very happy that Sri Ram is coming here, who's been chanting his whole life. And we hope that he continues chanting and it will help to let the other people also chant. In this way, if we can induce more and more people to chant, those who are already chanting, we give them all of our pronouns, you see. In that sense, many of us are newcomers in chanting in this lifetime. Although in previous lives we may have been chanting, that we cannot say. But nonetheless, our intention and our purpose is to get everyone as far as possible to take up this chanting. And for that, there's unlimited work to be done, unlimited service that needs to be done. So we hope that you also, Sri Ram, can help us with your experience. It will be very encouraging to all of us. This time I took with me one of my disciples uh, to the West. Last time also I took. And uh, that way, coming from India, I saw for the first time, never even flew in an airplane before, Jagadish does. First time flew in an airplane was flying from Calcutta to Bombay and Bombay to London. They said, of course, seeing the material opulence and technology, at first it was a surprise. But then after a while, he could see that actually there was a great need for preaching in India. <laughs> 